Welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about pin locations when we're making a slip joint folder. And you, you say, well, I'll just go by a print. Well, prints are good, right? We build everything to a print. But the finished product on a, on a handmade knife is going to vary a little bit knife by knife. I mean, unless you make them all on a CNC machine um, and come out with knives that are, you know, pretty good, then you're just talking about like production knives, right? They all work, they're functional, but they just don't have that perfect fit like a handmade knife. And the reason is why they have to have tolerances. We want to get rid of as many tolerances as we can for handmade because we want everything to be seamless. So I'm rambling here, but the question then becomes, how do we know where to locate our pins? The most important location on a slip joint folder by far is this hole right here. This hole right here, your pivot pin, that's, if you will, that's your zero, zero location for everything about this knife. It all starts right here. So right here, I've kind of drawn what the finished knife is gonna look like. You know, in a nutshell, right? There's what it looks like right there. And you'll notice though that I have not cut out any of this material, I've left it big. And this is actually two pieces. If you can see this, these are both of the liners that have been glued together so that they can't move. So when I drill all of these holes, they are going to be in the same places. There won't be any misalignment. And that's a good thing to, uh, to adopt. I mean, you can make your knives any way you want to, but when it comes to critical holes, by gluing these two pieces together, you're gonna to save yourself a lot of headache. So again, this hole, where you locate it on this piece of metal can be arbitrary, right? Because at the end of the day, we're just gonna make a knife out of it. But the one thing that is not arbitrary is that it all starts with this hole, which is located the same distance from this corner and this corner so that your rise and fall are the same. And, you know, it's not gonna be exactly perfect when you drill that hole, which is why if you look at my other videos, you're gonna use a rise and fall indicator to uh, dial all of that in. So let's talk about it. So we know that this is our hole. This is the center of the universe. And the spring, which you notice, has been cut to shape. None of this is heat treated. I've cut this to shape, but there are no holes in it whatsoever because you don't know where it's gonna go yet. And here's why that's important. To figure out where this hole goes is really about the attitude of this blade. You see that? If I push the spring forward, see how the blade tips down? You see that? So what I want is following, you know, the loose outline that I have here. I want my blade to tip down ever so slightly. You know why? Because it's not gonna be that way when we finish. It's, this blade is always gonna move up through the course of it. And let me, let me explain why. As we said, this is the critical dimension, right? This corner and this corner sets the rise and fall on your spring, and we want it to come bent down to absolute zero every time, right? So that corner and that corner, as we, as we sand those and polish them in, they have to get shorter, don't they? Every single thing you do in knife making is about removing metal, removing material. It just is, when you sand, when you polish, everything gets smaller. So if we started with this absolutely perfect, 
And then I had to polish that corner, polish that corner. What's that gonna do? That's gonna make this smaller and it's gonna cause that blade to stick up. And I don't wanna end with that, with it sticking up that way. So we've got to start with it tipped down just a little bit because if that gets polished, if that gets polished, if this side gets polished, this side, this side, every one of those is going to shorten material and cause that blade to move up. So we're gonna add some fudge factor by tipping that blade just ever so slightly. When I say ever so slightly, we're talking about from a straight edge coming down, I mean, a degree maybe, just a perceptible amount. Because by the time you get to this point, I have already made this edge and this edge, because these are final edges. Those are the dimension they're gonna be. Everything past this point is gonna be polishing. Everything past this point is polishing, but polishing still removes metal. So once I get that there, there we go. So if this were perfect, and I tip it down just a little bit, I know what my dimension is gonna be from my pivot to my spring pin. And that's what I have set here on these calipers. So, and this is just for video purposes. So with this set here, this would come down here and that means my hole is gonna be basically right here. Now, what I don't wanna do is go drill this and then come back and try to locate it all again just perfectly, somehow clamp it to this piece of metal and use my spring as a template. I don't wanna do that. All I'm doing now is just getting a layout, having a rough mark, right? And what I'll even do is put some layout fluid on here and scribe this so when I get over to the press, I can line this all back up again to my marks. And I'm gonna drill these at the same time. And that will give me this dimension perfectly through my liners. So once I have these two holes, in the right place, then I can set my rise and fall. And rise and fall is everything about a knife. Uh, I, won't, I won't beat a dead horse here. This last hole here, you are not gonna drill until everything is correct because that is gonna set your spring tension. So once you drill this hole, you get everything polished in with your rise and fall, it's all perfect. Then what we'll do is come back and drill this. We'll move that spring up about 60 thousandths because I use 90 thousandths pins, about two thirds the thickness of a pin here and clamp it and drill that hole. And then you will have all your holes in the right place. Simple concept, just don't get ahead of yourself. And the thing to remember is you can't base everything you do on the way that your knife looks before it's heat treated, before the holes are drilled, because you may sand this back spine. You might sand that three, four, ten times. You know, you just don't know. So the final geometry on the back here may change, but what can never change after this point are the dimensions of your finished surfaces. They can't change by much. You're going to polish them. They will change by, you know, thousandths, tenths, whatever it is. Just enough for that blade to move into final position when the knife is done. And that's basically it. Here we are over at the milling machine. And what I talked about, I wanted to demonstrate 
we're going to drill this hole at one time through both the spring and both liners all at one time to make sure that this pin right is always going to be perfect with this pin through all three of those components because that's what really matters at the end of the day right so we uh so we won't get misalignment so to make sure that we're in the right place here remember how i drew this line i traced it with layout why well, I, I don't think i showed that to you so i put some sharpie on here because it's easier than layout fluid and when we line all of those witness marks up sorry I'm shaking here I'm not trying to make you seasick I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and use my other to get everything on the marks let me get the head of this mill out of the way so if we look here, with everything set up on those lines, and see how I, call, <laughs> I uh, brain farted and called it a caliper earlier, but my dividers. See how I use dividers to uh, scribe this line right here? There's a line scribed through the liners and through the spring. And when I get my camera in the right place, you can see it's a witness mark. And then I went ahead and center punched right there on the witness mark. And I want that, that hole to be in the middle of my spring. And as you can see, the top line of the blade, let me get that contacting, the top line of the blade to the spring is not a perfect line. It's got some slope to it because this blade is tipping down in this direction ever so slightly. And since I've got it all marked up, see if I push it up, you can't even see that, but now it's perfectly straight across the back. That's where I can end up if, uh, if I end up polishing these surfaces more than I think I need to. So with it tipped down and everything on the marks, it's gonna be perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is do some fixturing. Um, I'm not gonna try to keep it in place and hold the camera, I can't do that. I'm just gonna demonstrate what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pull all this stuff out of the way. And we know that these witness marks are correct. So I would put this on the witness marks, clamp everything down, <laughs> clamp everything down, and then drill through it. You get the idea. All right, that's better. So with everything fixtured, with this aligned, the witness marks aligned, center punched hole. I'm going to go ahead and make my hole. First, I've got a, a little no flute spotting drill in here. I'll switch over to a 330 seconds bit because that's the uh, size of the pins that we're using. And with a 330 seconds bit, which is about 93 thousandths, which is exactly the same size as the pin stock we're using, we'll come down and make one hole through the spring and both liners, and they will forever be concentric. Um, interesting thing here, I don't think I've talked about this before. I use an aluminum backer plate. I learned that from uh, a knife maker named Don Robinson in his book, uh, Slip Joints My Way, which I really cannot recommend enough. 
Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It's very inexpensive and it is a treasure trove of information. But a sacrificial piece of aluminum makes for a great backer plate because I've got this sitting on parallels. So I know that this is in the vise. You know, basically it's, it's flat and level. It's in horizontal, perpendicular, all that kind of good stuff. It's where it's going to be rather than trying to drill into a, a piece of wood, which may you know, have some kind of weird angle to it. So this gives it a good solid backing. Nothing's gonna walk, nothing's gonna shimmy around, and I should have a perfectly perpendicular hole. Um, cheap aluminum, you can drill into it eight million times uh, before you chuck it away. And there we are into the soft aluminum. There's our hole. Use a uh, countersink bit to deburr the hole. So that when you lay things on there, they will lay nice and flat. There's our hole in spring deburred. Yes, deburr your spring too. Every time you drill a hole, right? Every time you drill a hole, every time you cut a let an edge, break all edges, deburr everything. You know, it uh, on paper it sounds great to have a perfect 90 degree edge on everything. In real life, that's what we call a shear, and it will cut into uh, opposing surfaces if there's any kind of side load whatsoever, which you're gonna have with a knife. So break all edges, chamfer all holes, and your life will work out great. And there we are just the slightest, slightest degree of slope right here, which is what we want. And there you have it. So thanks for watching, thanks for following along. I know I get a bit windy at times, um, but I'm just a dude in a shop making videos, man. <laughs> I don't have this production thing down to a fine science. Uh, I don't have a bunch of time to sit around editing and making professional videos. I'm just trying to be helpful. So if you like the videos, um, you know, please comment. If you got some feedback for me, I love to learn too. So I'd love to hear from you uh, fellow makers as well. Uh, you know by now I am no machinist. I'm just a dude making knives. All right. Have a great day. Thank you very much.